everyone, Ryan here with Dave Rowan Technologies. If you guys saw us at Barber in 2023, you might recognize this machine. This was the demo machine, um, but it has since been packed up, and we are actually going to demonstrate how to set up a weekend warrior today. Now, we'll kind of walk through the closed loop system, because that's what this is, and I'll kind of show you how you would set it up if this was an open loop. But without further ado, let's get to it. You guys actually receive your machine. First of all, it's going to have the cardboard around it. That's really easy to remove. Below that, the machine is going to be wrapped with plastic. That's just to protect it from shipping. You guys can go ahead and take that off. Um, the first thing you want to do, this will actually be on the side of the machine. You can go ahead and take that off and put it in front of the machine. That way it's already out of the way. Then you can actually proceed with just hooking your machine up to one tip. After you guys hook your machine in, the next thing you're going to want to do is your closed loop basins are actually inside the machine. So you can take these out and they're going to sit on the left hand side. Now you can also take your machine off the pallet. Um, we just leave it on here because it's easier to get them in and out, but for the home setting, taking it off the pallet is probably a better idea. You're going to want to make sure that your basins are underneath this top ball valve and then set your, your pump in here. You're going to want to have the ports facing the machine. We'll get to that later. It just makes it easier to actually hook the machine up. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take your exhaust out and the exhaust is very easy to put on. It's literally just press in. So get it and kind of wiggle it. That's all it takes. And the last thing that you guys are going to find in your machine is your media density cup. Now for your first fill up, this isn't necessary, but as you guys use your machine, as you lose bits of abrasive here and there, that's where this is going to come into play and I'll explain it in more detail in just a second. Next thing we're going to do is actually add water to the machine. But first, before you do that, you're going to want to make sure that your ball valve on your mason is closed, as well as the bottom ball valves on your machine. Now this top ball valve, you're actually going to open. This still has a little bit of water from where we were cleaning it up earlier. But you're going to want to open that so that as you're filling it up, it's going to overflow into this top basin and that's going to let you know that you have enough water in your machine. Now to fill your machine, it's super simple. Literally just put a water hose in here and begin filling. So as you guys can see, it's actually starting to overflow a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Turn my water off and then I'm actually going to allow the machine to equalize and then once that's finished I'm going to fill up this top basin until it starts to overflow and then fill up the bottom basin until it's about an inch or two from the top. Typically I like to do about an inch and we get a lot of rinse water from the bottom basin. The next thing you're going to want to hook up is actually the air supply to the diaphragm pump. So you're going to take your air supply for the diaphragm pump. So this clip is actually what locks it into place. And also, whenever you're hooking in the water to the bottom, there's also a clip on the underside. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. So make sure this is up. Go ahead and push this guy in, and then it'll actually click down. Guys, real quick, I just want to specify that typically the hose is already hooked into the pump whenever you receive your machine. Um, on the rear here, there's a Y, and that's what you're actually be looking for. Sometimes this reducer is already hooked in, and if that's the case, you can just take the hose coming off your diaphragm pump and hook it into here, and you're ready to go. If that reducer is already on the hose, it's just as simple. You simply plug it into that Y, your, your actual closed loop basins now have air. Sorry for the confusion, but this is typically how it's set up. You guys are ready to go. The next thing we can do, again, is the water. Now, this is where if you have an open loop cap, cabinet, it will differ. For an open loop setup, of course, you will not have the basins. And this hose will actually have a garden hose fit. So you'll just hook it into a fresh water supply and then it's in place of the closed loop, you can set a five gallon bucket. So that, whenever, that way whenever you open your drain valve, it'll drain into the bucket and you can dispose of it as you would like. But again, instead of having this fitting, which goes into our pump here, it'll have a garden hose fitting and you can just hook in your fresh water supply. This is really easy to hook in. All you have to do 
again is press that clip down. This is the clip that I'm referencing. If you do not get it clipped in and push it into the up position, once you have your hose in there, as soon as you put air on this, it'll actually shoot the hose out, and flood your, your shop. So that's not what we're trying to do here. Go ahead and put this guy in. And sometimes it's easiest to take a flathead screwdriver, come in underneath and actually lift it up. And again, you'll hear an audible click and this guy is nice and secure now. Now on your machine for the main air inlet, it's gonna come with this quarter inch NPT fitting. Now you can hook this into whatever line you have, um, whether it's through some sort of connector, something sort of like this, that'll hook into your standard airline. Or if you have the same fittings that we do, you can actually take this off, which is what I'm gonna do in this situation, and hook it directly into our line. Now this machine has air. At this point, I typically like to test everything before I put my abrasive in. There we go. So that's that's actually that pumping noise is actually the diaphragm pump priming itself. And so now we've got good rinse pressure. And if we check our pump, which on the weekend work, that's actually what this second switch is for. You can see. Got good blast air and also good pump pressure. Um, you can just tell by the amount of water that's coming out. If you want to, you can actually turn this off, the air that is, and we'll run the pump for just a moment. You can see here that we still have very good flow, which means that our pump was not damaged and shifting, and we're good to go. Now, when you get a machine, one big thing you can do is the pump at the bottom. Depending on how bumpy of a ride this machine has been through, you might have to sit it up straight, which that's easy to do. Just open the door, lift the floor, set the pump back straight, and make sure your agitation tubes are pointing down towards the floor. Um, that's going to ensure that you guys are getting the proper water to abrasive ratio when you're blasting, meaning you're going to be getting really good results. Um, so after I've tested it, I know this thing's working properly, you can go ahead and move on to abrasive. Now your abrasive is going to come in a box like this. It's 25 pounds. We measure it out and ship it directly to you guys. And 25 pounds of abrasive is exactly what the weekend wear needs. So all you're gonna do is simply open the box. And also, just so you guys know, on the actual box itself is where we can know what type of abrasive it is. And this is a 170 through 25 mesh glass bead. And that's really good for polishing stuff up. Take that abrasive out. Then you can actually take this media over to your machine. And it's just preference. You can actually dump it directly onto the floor. I typically prefer to lift it up and then dump the media in. Make sure that this top ball valve is closed and you add your media into your machine because if it's not closed, as soon as you add it in, you're going to have spillage. Not only are you going to have more water coming out, but there's a potential that you're going to put media in your basins. With a vapor loading machine, you do not want media getting into your basins. Um, if you're getting media in there, that means you're opening the ball valve too soon. Um, and you definitely should not add media directly to your basins. But with that being said, we can go ahead and put this media in here. Just like that guys, you've got your media added into your machine properly, you've got the correct amounts of water, it's all plumbed in, that way you've got air, your machine is set up and ready to go. I know I mentioned earlier your abrasive density cup, and to perform this test, all you're going to want to do is turn the air off to the machine, that way you're just getting pump pressure, and then this cup actually goes on the inside, and this is what you're going to use to check your abrasive to water ratio. So the machine's still going to have a little bit of air on it just because it's stored in the mines, but if I actually hit the foot pedal really quick, that's gone pretty much immediately. Um, what you can do with this, there's two ways of doing it. One way is holding your hand over the cup, forcing the abrasive and the story mixture down in there. And the other way is to put it on the side, kind of like this, and let it flow around and stuff. So I'll do a little bit of the demonstration. That's one way to do it. I typically find that cupping your hand over is better. 
So I let it run for a second, and what that's doing is allowing the agitation system to do its job. And then you can actually put the blast nozzle down in the cup, and run for a little bit. Then you can remove that cup and allow your abrasive to settle. And you can actually start to see it working in the bottom here. So that's the abrasive falling down, falling out of sedimentation. And we'll be able to check our abrasive ratio here in a moment. So again, that's a really easy test you guys can perform. And realistically, what it's for is if you start to notice that your parts aren't getting cleaned as effectively, typically it just means that you have less media in your machine. Um, another big thing, a common misconception with vapor honey cabinets is that the air pressure is actually what determines how well the machine cleans. But let's say, for example, you're cleaning rusty parts or something that has paint on it. Typically, you're going to use something like an aluminum oxide or a crushed glass to actually remove that. Glass bead is not used to remove paint. Um, glass bead is perfect for removing light levels of corrosion, cleaning parts up, making them look great. But you can use it to remove, for example, we had a part, it was a TRX250R engine case and we were actually able to remove the paint off of it. We don't recommend it, if that makes any sense. Um, but if you guys have any questions about what abrasive to use with your machine, depending on your application, again, give us a call. The number is 828-202-5563. We'll be happy to help you guys figure out what you're going to need for your application and what abrasive suits you. Because another big thing with vapor cloning is that you can actually mix abrasives. Um, and that's because we do have the agitation system that's constantly mixing all that up, making sure you're getting the correct ratio. And so you can actually mix something like an aluminum oxide and a glass bead. That way you're cutting and polishing at the exact same time, which is big in the industry because it speeds up your processes. It's not two separate ones, it's a combination. But again, that's the setup of the weekend for you. If you guys have any questions, again, our number is 828-202-5563. If you need anything else, leave it in the comments below. We will try our best to answer those questions. But yeah, hope you guys can get one of these things in your shop soon. And if you already have one, make sure to tag us when you post your results. We'd love to see the cool stuff you guys are doing with these things. Hope you guys like this. Again, any questions, 828-202-5563. Have a great day. Peace.